Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Normally my introduction would be from in the shop, uh, getting ready to to uh, get going on our day, but uh, <laughs> I have this new camera. I just got it the other day, and I've been using one of those little action cameras, you know, that, uh, I mean, it it has an on and off button and a record button, you know. This one here, um, you know, I have to, the battery doesn't last nearly as long in this one either as the, as the uh, little action cam I've been using. So I have two batteries for this one. And during the making of a video, I'm constantly having to, you know, you never see it obviously, but uh, somewhere along the line, I'll have to shut the camera off, take it off the tripod, take that battery out, bring it up here to the kitchen and plug it in and, with the, and take the other battery that, that's fully charged and put it back in. And I swap batteries uh, during a project with this camera three or four times. Anyway, it's got like a boom mic on it, like a shotgun mic on the top, an external microphone. And you have to turn that on too. And uh, long story short, during my introduction this morning when we started this video, I had the mic off. So you just see me in the shop, and I'm talking away and holding the knife up, <laughs> no sound. And uh, I think the first three or four clips that I did this morning uh, on this video, I forgot to turn the microphone on. So... Bear with me. I'll get used to this camera. Um, so, we're not going to really have it. This will be the introduction because uh, I screwed the one up in the shop this morning with no sound. And my first two or three clips, no sound either. So, we're just going to jump right in to uh, some grinding and, uh, and working on the bevels and that. And... Uh, and then I'll talk to you after a little bit. So thanks for joining me today and uh, hope you enjoy the video.
guys, here's where we are. We've got our bevels, our uh, rough grind in on our bevels here. Uh, they came out quite well. I'm uh, I'm just grinding them freehand. I did uh, on the last night that I did for a customer. I used a jig, and I just didn't think that it. I don't know. It didn't work very well for me. So I'm just freehand and I went through two 40 grit belts to do this, uh, to bevel this and just to shape this a little in here. Two 40 grit Harbor Freight belts. Um, but we've got this down to oh a little less than a sixteenth of an inch and uh, I don't believe we want to go any thinner than that before we heat treat it. It's probably uh, it's probably down to about 360 fourths. We don't want to go any smaller than that. The point is already uh, a little sharper than I'd like it going into heat treat, but uh, I think we'll be okay on that. Uh, tang is pretty much the shape I'm, I want it to be. And uh, I know I said that I was going to leave, you know, maybe uh, like that much of the tang sticking out but I don't know I don't think I'm gonna do that it just doesn't look right in my head you know so we're gonna go ahead and cover the whole tang we've got some pretty nice wood uh, my neighbor over here is a woodworker and he gave me some pretty decent looking wood and uh, and then I've got some that I bought and another friend of mine brought over some wood and uh, the problem with the stuff he brought is the grain is going, it, they're slabs, but they were cut from the ends, you know what I mean? So you've only got, depending on the thickness of the slab he gave me, you know, the grain only runs like that far. If you go, if you try to cut out scales the other way, you're going the wrong way on the wood grain. They work great for like, uh, if I want to section, you know, some glue several pieces of wood together. So that the grain is all run in the proper way and you can make different colors you know do different colors and what have you but I think I just want to find a nice solid piece of wood for this so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of clean this up just a little bit more and uh, and find some wood and we'll get some handle scales cut out for this and that and uh, we'll be back directly well okay so we've got our punch marks here where we want to drill our tang and I didn't break a punch this time so uh, maybe we're in luck here maybe this one annealed a little better get a little oil on that let's see how we do here Hey, look at that, it's going to drill it. So we must have got it annealed a little better this time. I'm going to have to just pay attention, make sure that I anneal these things properly. The last two knives I've made with this leaf spring steel, my drill wouldn't touch the tang when it's time. But this time, she's cutting through there like butter. That's what we like. There. 
So there that is. Got our three holes drilled. We're going to go with three pins. This is a pretty good sized knife. So I wanted to go with three pins and some people might say that by putting that one right there to weaken that blade, weaken that handle, but as thick as that is, I guarantee you that's not going to be weak. You can't hit anything hard enough with that to break that right that's some pretty meaty that's a pretty meaty knife overall uh, and I don't know you know I like a nice heavy knife I like a knife that I know is not gonna break on me that I know will stay sharp you know so and this is gonna be one of those knives now I think I'm gonna take some of this wood here that my neighbor gave me. I don't even know what it is. It may be walnut. But uh, if I can get it right in the light there. It's got some pretty nice uh, wavy looking grain to it. So I think we're going to use that. And uh, we'll get some scales cut up here next. And, and uh, get stuff ready to go. So I want to I want to make sure well, actually, I, we can go ahead and heat treat this knife now. Now that my tang holes are drilled and everything and the rough grinds are done, we've pretty much done anything we want to do to it. Uh, so I think let's go ahead and get this thing heat treated and quenched. And then we can be getting it, uh, getting a couple of good tempers on it to where uh, she's ready to put put some scales on and uh, yeah so uh, we'll uh, we'll come back when we're ready to dunk this thing in some oil So in my infinite wisdom, obviously, I forgot to turn the microphone on on the camera. But you saw the quench and uh, what I was showing you a minute ago, but you couldn't hear, was uh, the difference in sound. See, we didn't quench the tang. You can hear how dull that sounds and it bites right in. But our blade... Gates a file real well. Soft, hard. So, uh, so we got a real good quench. It's no warp. Stayed nice and straight. Uh, so we're gonna go get it in the oven now and get it tempered up. And I uh, apologize about the microphone thing. I'm working with this new camera, and I'm not used to having to turn the microphone on and off with the camera, but uh, we'll get her all straightened out, but anyway, we're ready for temper, so we'll get this thing tempered and, uh, and uh, work on some scales. So, while we're waiting on that knife to uh, temper in the oven, I thought we'd go ahead and heat this up, see if we can't stretch this out and square it up pretty nice and get ready to throw a twist on it. So. We'll get some heat on this and we'll be back. I 
I think that'll work a little better over the corn. seeing a little separation right there folks and that's not good doggone it I don't know if we can save that or not shoot uh, This side here is real welded up real well. I think I'm going to throw a little flux on there and see if we can save that. Okay, this thing ought to be hot enough to weld. like it's cooling off 
fairly evenly. I had it. It's cooling off faster in there because that was sitting on the anvil while I was putting my glove on, but the heat's evening out nicely. I think we I think we may have uh, saved that one. This is the danger when you do uh, Damascus like this is you've got all your layers in here running like this and it's not bad if you're just going to stretch it out this way you know and, and you don't care that much about keeping it square you're just going to stretch it out with the grain so to speak uh, that works real well because what you're doing virtually while you're stretching it out is you're even welding it even more uh, but when you come this way and you want to square it up and squash it against that grain that's when you can get splits in your steel if it wasn't welded properly so um, I don't know we've got a little spot right in here and I can't really tell I don't think that that's going to be a problem, but you know what, let's uh, heat this thing up and we'll throw a little more flux right in there and we'll nail it again just to make sure. I think we're going to be okay. This here just started happening. This is outside of the shop door, the garage door. I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's snow over there on the grass. It's not sticking to the driveway yet, it's just wet because it was pretty sunny today, but it's sticking to my windshield of my exploder. And uh Yeah, it turned winter on us while we were in here. You don't, uh, you don't realize it's dark and uh, I'm in the forge, I'm in the shop with the forge going and it keeps it pretty warm in there.
got our got our oven heating up again for round two. got a way to go yet. Before we can uh, before we can twist it, but we're getting closer every heat. So I decided on this uh, I believe it's walnut. Uh, my neighbor didn't know for sure what it was. But I've marked out the length that we need here. And uh, once our knife's done tempering, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, get these scales all fitted up. And, uh, and we'll cut our pins and make sure the scales are going to fit and everything. Then we'll do our finished bevels. We'll finish grinding our bevels and our final cleanup. And what have you. And... Uh, not going to be a lot of sanding and finishing. I'm going to leave the flats on that knife uh, with that forged look, you know. And uh, so let's cut these off. So I've got our micarta that I made a few videos ago. I had to change saw blades on this bandsaw. This is actually a, a metal blade that I've got on here. But the wood, but the wood blade is so aggressive it it's a little tough on the micarta, so uh, we're gonna use this metal blade. We're just gonna kind of trim these edges off. Okay guys, here's our knife all tempered up. You can see those pretty colors in that blade. So we got that all tempered. You know, a lot of times you find that it's not the work uh, on the blade that takes so long. It's oftentimes it's the uh, it's the waiting, uh, like when we anneal a knife, you know, and we have to wait for uh, quite some time 
for that to anneal and and it's just downtime and uh, when we uh, when we temper a knife you know again it's all that waiting time two two and a half hours total of uh, tempering time you know but um, we got her we've got her about done uh, we got our scale things cut up here and uh, we'll make sure those get all flattened out and and ready to go but we'll do that tomorrow but that's how that's gonna go on the knife scale liners inside and and this walnut on the outside I think this is walnut I, I'm not my neighbor who gave it to me didn't really know what it was either, but uh, but he thinks it's walnut, so I'm going to go with uh, what he says. So, but uh, I'm glad to have this thing. Uh, we're on the home stretch now. A little bit of finished grinding. We want to kind of round this up here a little bit, and this, and kind of smooth these edges up and these lines a little. Uh, We'll take our our stock for our scales and uh, sand those down nice and flat so we get a nice tight even fit. And then we got our billet drawn out pretty well today. Our Damascus billet. I think we're getting close. Uh, we're getting pretty close to where we can twist this thing. I think if we got a good high heat on it we could just about twist it right where it is and it's kind of a catch-22 because uh, I don't want to draw it out too far um, but on the other hand we want to draw it out far enough that we can get a good twist on it so uh, we may draw it out just a little bit more tomorrow and uh, get it a little more where we want it but uh, and then we'll uh, then we'll throw a twist in it and we're gonna make a knife out of that too so all in all uh, a good day in the shop we got a quite a bit accomplished today snowing like the Dickens out there I'm not working tomorrow uh, not because of the snow, but because it's President's Day and the company that we're hauling for isn't working, so we're not working either. Uh, we'll get these bevels, we'll get the finished grind done on these bevels and try out one of those ceramic belts I got. Uh, we're almost there, so that'll be pretty easy to do. We'll finish that up. We'll, we'll, uh, We'll get it cleaned up a little bit and get our scales put on it. And that knife's going to be finished. So I really appreciate you joining me today. Uh, it's getting pretty late here tonight. I was going to go ahead and work on those scales a little bit. But uh, shoot, it's getting late and I'm getting tired. And uh, shut the forge down. It's getting kind of chilly out here in the shop. So uh, thanks for being here. Get out in your shop and beat on something or, or uh, you know, it's good therapy, man. It, it, it's like my therapist, that and my Harley and my guitar. I've got several therapists, but, uh, you know, it's just a lot of fun. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be the greatest blacksmith in the world. Uh, but just get out there and, uh, and practice. Just find some piece of metal and heat it up and make something out of it, you know. I mean, you don't have to have high carbon hardenable steel unless you're making a knife or a tool of some sort, um, you know, or chain, I guess. You need pretty decent steel to make chain. But who makes chain, really, other than just for the fun of saying I made some chain? Uh, but you can make coat hooks and bottle openers and uh, candle holders and just a whole litany of things that uh, don't really require 
you know, any type of expensive steals or anything like that. So, so get out there and have some fun and uh, practice your skills. And every time you swing that hammer, you get a little better and a little better. So, uh, appreciate you watching. Subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. Please leave me a comment if you want, you know, if you have questions or whatever. I try to keep up on all the comments. So, uh, so uh, yeah, that's all for today. And uh, we'll, be, be, uh, we'll be back tomorrow finishing up the scales on this knife and what have you. So uh, take care, be safe, and we'll see you on the next one.